Hey everybody, welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, December 9th. Let's jump in and go through the trades that we made for the week starting on Monday, December 5th. So the first trade we made was an adjusting trade in our natural gas strangle. So as you can see, we bought back our 255 put and we rolled that up to the 345. Uh, just rolling up the puts. Uh, our call side was, was breached, so we, we roll the puts up to the 30 delta, just like we always do. Let's go to the platform and take a look. So as you can see, the, uh, the puts were down here at the 245 level. Price has continued to run up in natural gas. We've had a huge move to the upside breached our calls so we simply rolled our puts up to the 30 delta to the 345 right here and you can see prices continue to move up but we'll continue to manage that if we need to make an adjustment next week we will uh, in the january cycle there's only 18 yeah 18 days left so if we do make an adjustment more than likely <clears throat> we will roll that position out to the february cycle we also put on a, uh, another strangle in natural gas in the February cycle to collect more credit. With the market closed, you're going to see the graph looks a little bit odd right now, but as you can see, price is, is very centered. Uh, nothing to do on that one, so hopefully we get a contraction. If we take a look at where implied volatility is in natural gas, as you can see, it's still extremely high. So a great time to be putting on new short premium positions and we'll continue to monitor that into next week. So I mentioned that we put on that new strangle in natural gas in February. Uh, in IWM, we, uh, we, we bought back our put side, the untested side. I did not add another iron condor because IV's contracted so much. So we'll wait for a little bit of a pop in IV hopefully next week and look to add another iron condor to collect more credit there. So let's take a look at uh, where we stand in IWM. So as you can see, I mean, these stock indexes have continued to just have extended powerful moves to the upside, which obviously creates a contraction in volatility. So if we look at our uh, uh, graphs here, we've got, we've got this, uh, this call side of one of our iron condors blew through our, our uh, call side so we're we're at a, a decent loss on that one but we took the profit off on the put side and then same thing for this call on the other iron condor we're probably going to sustain the max loss on this but this is why you've you've got to keep your size in check okay when you put on an iron condor you've got to be willing to take that full loss now we've had, this is an extraordinary move that we've had in, in IWM. So you're not going to see this very often at all, but this is a situation where you've got to make sure you keep your size small. And next week, if we do get a little bit of a pop uh, in implied volatility, we'll put on another iron condor, collect more credit, and, and, and we'll work our way out of, this, uh, out of this loss. It may take a couple months, but that's what you've got to do. When you have huge moves like this, you've got to just, you've got to leave your tested side on, continue to add additional uh, trades and continue to to eat away at those eat away at those losses and, and sometimes it takes a few months to get back but that's just how trading works uh, let's see next trade was in SPX so again another stock index where the implied volatility is currently very low at 10 when I put this on so calendar spreads remember if you if you watch the calendar course Calendar spreads benefit from, benefit from an increase in implied volatility. So the best time to put those on is when implied volatility is low. So you can see it was, it was at 10 when I put this on. It's actually contracted even more now where, the, uh, where it's down to zero. And again, it's because we've had this huge move. There's less perceived risk in the marketplace. And so we, we put that on. So the initial one we put on was the 2205 right here. Now, just in this, just within the week, we had a move where the, where the price moved outside of our break even. So as an adjustment, we added another calendar. So we now we added the, the 2260 
And we just did that today. So you can see it widens out our break evens and gives us more time to be right. And so now we continue to wait. So again, if we get a pop in implied volatility, that'll help our position. Uh, most likely won't be able to take this off next week, uh, but typically two, three weeks is the kind of a time frame that you're in these calendar trades for. So again, we, uh, we want to mix up our, keep putting on new positions. We want to mix up our strategies, diversify our strategies, and that's how you're going to continue to be profitable over time. So SPX, next one was we put on an iron condor in Goldman Sachs. And you know not only have the stock indices had extraordinary moves to the upside, but also the financial stocks uh, in particular have had really big moves. Now, we got in this trade a couple days ago. Uh, but look at what Goldman Sachs has done. And the crazy thing about this is, look at the implied volatility. Even though it's going up, implied volatility is increasing as well, giving us a good opportunity to put on uh, premium selling strategies in Goldman Sachs. So we're down a little bit in this because the implied volatility did spike from where we put it on, but still well within our, centered well within our range. So we'll continue to monitor that. And then oil, uh, forward slash CL, uh, we, we closed a trade for a nice profit. We had that on for about 15 days. Uh, implied volatility has contracted nicely all the way down to five. So it was a great time to get out of that trade for about a 40 to 50% of max profit. So if we took a look, take a look at oil, we've got, uh, you know, we, we put this trade on back on 11.22, so this day right here, we had a small move down in oil, and then it just ripped higher, then it came back down a little bit, and that's when we took the trade off. And look what happened to implied volatility during that time. When we put it on, implied volatility was at about 63, spiked up on us, and then just got crushed, which allowed our position to be profitable, and we took that off for a nice profit in just 15 days. Uh, let's see, closing trade in FXE. So we put a straddle on in FXE back on 11.21, and we took that off. Uh, remember on straddles, we want to take that off for about a 25% of max profit. So we got a nice contraction in FXE. We're able to take that one off. So if we take a look at FXE, As you can see, we put this trade on back on 1121. So this day right here, this little green bar. And we had a, an implied volatility was in the 80s at that point. We had a little bit of a move up and then a drop down. And at the same time, implied volatility contracted nicely, giving, giving us a chance to get out of that for a nice profit. Moving on, the next trade was an adjusting trade in SPY. So in this trade, we bought back the, the call verticals and then we put on another iron condor to collect more credit. Uh, in, and we did that in the, uh, the new iron condor in the January cycle. So if we took a look at SPY, again, same kind of story with the other stocks that just continuing to rip higher. So we've got to make these necessary adjustments. So here's the, here's the new iron condor that we put on. And then we've got these other uh, call sides to our previous iron condor still on. So assuming we get a, a move down in the next week, we'll, we'll take this off. We've only got, in December, we've only got seven days left to expiration. So we really need a, a move down pretty quickly to get out of that for a kind of a break even or, or potentially a small profit. Uh, if it keeps moving higher, we're obviously gonna, we're gonna take a loss on that side as well as this one uh, is most likely gonna uh, remain at a uh, uh, max loss unless we get a, a major move down next week. So we'll continue to monitor that, that, monitor that, make sure you keep your position small. So any loss that you take is not gonna, is not gonna hurt your account uh, to a large extent. Uh, let's see, next move, next one is uh, in TLT. So in TLT, implied volatility continues to stay high at 77, so we entered a new iron condor in TLT. And so let's go to that trade first. 
So we did that in January. Our previous positions were in the December cycle. And this is the new one we added in January. So it's still very centered. We'll wait for that one. Hopefully we get a contraction. The FOMC makes a, uh, an announcement, probably gonna raise rates. Uh, the consensus is about 97% chance that they'll raise rates a quarter a point, quarter to 50 basis points. Uh, so we could see a little bit of volatility in TLT, but most likely after that announcement, which is on Wednesday, we'll see a decent contraction in IV. So we're still at 65. After the announcement, most likely we'll see a contraction there, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, actually, let's go back to TLT and look at the rest of the positions in there. So we've got that. We, we have another iron condor in December, and I actually had an order in to take off our call side because our put side got tested. Uh, I didn't get filled, so we'll, we'll look to potentially take that off next week. And then uh, we've got one other uh, put side. It'll most likely be a max loss on that unless we get a huge move to the upside in bonds. So we'll take that loss and move on and continue to add positions to, to, to get that money back. And the last trade, which was today, was the uh, we added that additional calendar in SPX, which I already went over. So we've got the, the double calendar in SPX. Let's take a look at some of the other positions that we also have on. Uh, we've still got a position on in the oil future. So we took one, one strangle off. We've still got one adjusted strangle left. So we need a little bit of a move down. Uh, we're, uh, we're about at break even on this trade overall with the adjustments and everything we've done. So if we can get a nice move down in oil, we'll take that off for a nice profit. In natural gas, we already went over that one. Bonds, we've got a, a strangle still in bonds, still fairly centered. Uh, and so we'll wait for that contraction in IV and hopefully get out of that trade uh, in the next week or so. In the soybean futures, we've got an iron condor. Profit line looks a little skewed because the market's closed right now, but uh, it's pretty fairly well centered, right at about break even on the trade at this point. So looking for potentially a little bit of a move up or to stay right where it is and hopefully take that off for a profit in the next week or two. EWW, we've got a strangle on. Uh, it's moved up on us a little bit. We're at right at about break even at this point. So we'll continue to wait and hopefully get a, uh, get a contraction there in EWD. EWW, actually we've, we've already gotten a really good sized contraction. We just need some time to go by to, uh, to exit that trade. Uh, FXY, again, we've got a strangle on in there. It's moved down on us here. So we're down slightly on that trade, but we can get a little bit of a move up. And let's see where IV is in FXY. We've had a good contraction, so we got the IV contraction we wanted. Uh, it's just moved down a little bit, so we just need it to stay in a little bit of a range, and we can get out of that one for a nice profit potentially next week or in the next week or two. GDX, we had a pretty good spike in implied volatility and a good move down today, uh, but we're still still fairly centered in our adjusted strangle. We're at about break even on this trade. Remember, we rolled this from December to January last week. So we'll continue to wait and wait for our profit line to, to move up before we get out of this trade for a nice profit. GLD, we went, uh, we've got, we've got a, uh, a put side still on here, looking for a move up in GLD. We've got one other put side that's, that's probably gonna be at a max loss on that side. And then we had, we had simultaneously added another iron condor which is still centered, we're in the profit there, so we'll continue to collect that credit and, uh, and make moves to, to get back uh, that loss from the previous iron condor on that one. Again, sometimes this takes a couple months, but we'll continue to work it and, and make it happen. Goldman Sachs, iron condor, we went over that one. We went over IWM, SPX, TLT, XBI. So this is a, an adjusted strangle that we've rolled out to January last week. Uh, that's working nicely. We're at about break even on this trade, so we'll continue to wait and uh, potentially take that trade off once we get uh, a contraction in IV or as time passes and we wait for that one to improve. 
XLF, which is the uh, financial sector ETF. We've had some nice high volatility in there, along with an extended move. If we take a look at our trade, it's moved up on us, so it's outside of our range. Uh, we, we made one adjustment and it's continued to move higher. So if we look at our call side, excuse me, our put side, uh, we've, still got some, we've still got some juice, we've still got some premium in that trade, so I'm not looking to make another adjustment yet. If it continues to move higher next week, we'll potentially look to make an adjustment and may have to go inverted uh, and then wait and potentially roll that trade out to February. So nothing else to do at this point. XLU, again, this is another trade we, we rolled from December to January, so we we'll just continue to, to wait on this one. Again, we're at about break even on the overall trade with adjustments and everything. So we'll continue to wait if we get a little bit of a move down, get out of this one for a small profit. And XLV, still very centered in our strangle here. And so we'll just continue to wait on XLV. And as you can see, we got a nice contraction in implied volatility. So now we, we just need some more time to go by uh, to make our profit line continue to, to rise. So hope that was all helpful. If you guys have any questions, please post them in the forum really trying to advocate members start instead of emailing go ahead and post post them in the members only forum this helps us be a little bit more efficient to answer your questions as well as gives other members the ability to answer your questions as well so have a great have a great weekend be ready for some more trades next week see you then